Have you ever wanted to learn 3D design but thought it was too complicated and expensive? Fear not, as I have an exciting tool to share with you that challenges everything you've ever thought about learning 3D design. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm excited to present to you Spline, an app to design and collaborate in 3D. In this video I'm going to show you how to add 3D models in Webflow. This process can also work in other web design tools too. But first, what is Spline? Spline is a 3D app that allows you to create 3D scenes, edit materials and model 3D objects in real time. You can animate, integrate React components and so much more, giving you control over the outcome of your design work. As a UX designer, you may be wondering where you fit in the 3D design world, but there are a range of benefits 3D design can bring to a user's experience. For example, 3D modeling can be used to communicate your design's ideas better, promote products and immerse people in a more realistic experience. You don't have to learn 3D design to become a UX designer, but it is an excellent ability to add to your skill set in an already competitive field. Plus, with Spline, it's never been easier to design in 3D. If you're completely new to 3D design, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the tool and then show you how to add 3D models from Spline into Webflow. First, you're going to open up the Spline app by going to spline.design. Tap open and that will bring you out to the files view. You can see some of the files I've created and also the models I've been looking at from the library. I want to give a special mention to the library as it's a great place to go for inspiration and to see just how far you can push your imagination. You can also find examples on Instagram where Spline share what other creators have been making with the tool. In the app, you'll see that there are two views when you open it up, the files view and the editor view. In the files view, you can see that we have a nav bar to organize and search for your files, a left side bar, this is where you can access the library. It's also home to your profile, files, teams, and more. The middle section here is the file browser, which shows you an overview of your designs. Now I'm currently working on a landing page for a product launching tool, and I would like a 3D MacBook to go in the hero image area. As this is something I've looked at recently, I can see it here in the top left. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and it will take us to the editor view. And opening up, you can see we have this really cool 3D model. And if I press Alt and click and drag, you can rotate the model too. What I love about the editor view is that it looks familiar. It looks like a design tool that I've used before. At the top, we have a toolbar, which provides quick access to the most common objects like transform options and special modes. We also have vector tools and frame mode too. We can also see the zoom value, export our scene or go into presentation mode. When you press the plus icon, that gives you a full list of available objects. You can also, towards the end of the toolbar, press the play icon to access presentation mode. The left side bar will show all the components that make up your design, which again looks really familiar to me as a designer. On the right side bar shows further customization of your designs and here you can change the material, the lighting and so on. And finally we have the viewport which is the middle section here. This is where the magic happens. It's good to get familiar with the editor as we'll be spending a lot of time here. So. How do you add 3D models into Webflow? So what I want to do is just go up here to export and there are so many export options within Spline. I'm going to use the public URL link um, and I'm gonna use the embed code. So the difference between the two is that the public URL link, if I were to copy that, that's usually just used to send someone a link to your file and it will just open up in the browser. And you can see that we have our MacBook here that we can interact with, which is really cool. But that can't be embedded into the project that we're working on. So I would use the embed code and that's used to embed your scene in other tools like Notion, Webflow, WordPress, etc. If I had stronger coding skills, I would be using the Reacts component, but I'm going to stick with the public URL and copy the embed code. 
not forgetting that you also have additional features when you export so you can change the camera settings orbit the zoom the pan the background color whether you show or hide so not something i want to click hide on i have also within the scene the background colour, I like to click and just check that the transparency of that has been brought right down so that when I copy the embed code across, there it's transparent and it sits perfectly on top of my design. Now I'm going to hop over to Webflow and just show you where I would add that in. And it's loading my project launch project. <laughs> what a mouthful. So if I go to preview, you can see that what I've got in place currently is just a plain PNG MacBook that just appears. I want to replace that with the 3D model. So I am going to hop out of preview mode and navigate to the hero image section. And what I want to do is just hide that for now because I don't want to commit to a full delete yet and you go into add elements and you want to go and get an embed component and add that in. So the code that we had over from Webflow when we were exporting the public URL, we get the embed code and copy that. And that gets pasted into the HTML embed code editor and we just click save and close. And when that loads, it actually loads and it's really teeny tiny so what I'm going to show you next is just how you adjust that and give it some space so for position I click absolute and I want to get it across to the right so I'm going to try and add three vertical width will push it across to the right so now that we've got it in the right space I'm going to adjust the size here, so I'm going to try by adding a width of 700 and that's in pixels. I want to go for 100% vertical height. Amazing, just so that we have it with enough space around it. That is looking good. Now I just want to be careful of it not cutting off the 3D image, so I might even see what it might be like if I put 100 vertical width. Okay, that's done too much. Maybe I'll do 50%. There we go. Now it's stopped cutting off this edge and it's just giving it enough room to breathe. So I'm excited to preview this now. So if I toggle to preview and we have it, look at that. I am able to click and drag and move around this 3D object and it doesn't get cut off and I really like when you look at the bottom how the shadow appears there and it's just great. I hope this video has shown you that adding 3D models to your designs has never been easier and this is just one of the many things you can do using Spline. I highly recommend heading over to spline.design to try it for yourself today. You can experiment with designs in the library or come up with your own. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in learning 3D design and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!